think what the Tea Party has taught all of us is that when you show up, uh, you can make things happen. And I will tell you that uh, when I first encountered the Tea Party, I thought, oh, these people are crazy. <laughs> you know, and you would hear everyone say, oh, they're crazy. Well, you know what? Crazy showed up. And not only did Crazy show up, but Crazy elected 39 other members to the House of Representatives and took a lot of people out. So, you know, oftentimes things may look a little bit benign. And what I'm finding, particularly at the federal level now, is that uh, if, if something seems threatening, most likely it is. I mean, who would have thought that we would be relitigating uh, Planned Parenthood or contraception? Uh, you know, I thought that these issues were well resolved uh, years ago. Uh, certainly uh, even before the time of my birth, but I see that uh, we are now relitigating a whole host of issues uh, when it comes to our civil society. And I think these are really civil society issues. I always share with people, um, you know, uh, one of my, my, my favorite sort of putting things in context was the Y2 scare, what, the Y2K scare. Remember when, you know, we were going into the year 2000 and everyone was like, oh my God, you know, get your duct tape, get your water, get your flashlights, get your batteries, because, you know, the computer's going to shut down and life as we know it will be over. Well, I resisted that. I resisted it. I said, oh, please, this is all hype. You know, people are just trying to sell us stuff. But around 11.49 p.m. on December 31st, I ran out and got some water just in case. You know, and while that wasn't the Y2K that we thought it would be, I think we're in it now. I think as a civil society, we are at uh, the point where we have to determine which directions we take in the 21st century. A lot of the things that we have been accustomed to, uh, particularly as New Yorkers um, and as a nation, quite frankly, are no longer uh, uh, the pathway to, to success that we thought they were. So our economy is less industrialized than it's ever been. It's more technologically driven. But our school systems don't reflect that. Uh, our, our training doesn't reflect that. And so there's a lot that we must do uh, to sort of take us there. But what is the social compact that we have one with another? Uh, to me, uh, they're just some key things. They're Social Security. They're Medicare. They're Medicaid. They're taking care of the least of these amongst us. Um, as part of that social contact. Well, I can tell you all of that is under threat right now. The testing of, uh, of our water, of our air, uh, making sure that we're in an environmentally sound uh, civil society, that's all under threat right now. You know, the defunding of EPA. Even things like um, uh, the uh, National Endowment of the Arts. You know, I, I, I've had the uh, pleasure of growing up in this district a live lifelong resident. And, you know, were it not for the Brooklyn Museum, the Botanical Gardens, the Prospect, Prospect Park, the Brooklyn Academy of Music, I would dare say that my life would not have been enriched. My parents weren't wealthy. These were the institutions of the community. We could walk there. Children's Museum. All of these institutions are now seen as luxury items in the eyes of those who are the majority in the House of Representatives. So it's a battle each and every week. I tell people I like to come home directly at the end of each week because I can detox. I can come back and remember why I took on this challenge, why I seek uh, my constituent support, encouragement, guidance, and counsel. Because it's truly a battle in Washington right now. I mean, you see uh, how beleaguered our president has been the day he swore in. They swore they were going to get him out. And there's not been a moment of compromise since we've been there. Not a moment of negotiation. It's all been their way or the highway. And they even do it amongst themselves. Uh, just this week, we were uh, trying to pass cybersecurity bill out of the House of Representatives. I happen to serve on the Homeland Security Committee, and I'm the ranking member for cybersecurity. And they uh, basically dismantled this bill because other committees of jurisdiction where Tea Party members are in leadership uh, just ba basically uh, got involved with the power struggle with the uh, the members of our committee, the chairman of our committee. You wouldn't believe it, but Peter King, Peter King is not a Tea Party, right? <laughs> and he's not even uh, well-liked, necessarily, within his uh, conference. And so he becomes the low man on the totem pole, 
but all of our safety becomes compromised because Homeland Security has jurisdiction for cybersecurity, yet their bill gets watered down by other uh, committees where uh, more power is being vested. Committees like intelligence, uh, the intelligence committee. So it's a power struggle, not only with the Democrats and the minority trying to keep the moral compass on, on the right trajectory, but it is also a struggle within the Republican Party itself. They're eating their own. They're trying to get as many extreme 